Then uh, if you have questions, we'll be going around with the microphone. You can ask any kind of question you want. <laughs> if you want to ask a question from, from the floor, please wait until the microphone is available. Many people say I have a loud voice and it can be heard. That's not true. This is a senior population whose hearing is not what it used to be. And also, many people depend on watching videos of the meetings, adjusting the audio levels and the video for a wide range of levels that result for not using microphones is not easy and not always possible. I didn't write that. I'm just reading. Okay, so if you guys want to start, whichever end. Jerry, you want to start? Ron, you want to start? Start at one end, work your way down, give your right. name, your background, your details, yeah, that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Are you here? No. It's not on. 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 It's Good morning. Go ahead. That's on. Okay, good. Is it on now? It is. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Ron Wheeler. I live in unit uh, number 191. And I know we've got a lot of new people here in the park. So for those of you who don't know me or can't remember me, I've been here since 09. And uh, I've served on the board before for two years. Uh, I got off in uh, 18 and 19 because I was uh, ill then. Got over that pretty good, so I'm ready to go again. And uh, I really like Port Charlotte Village. Uh, you can read my resume there. Uh, I've been on this board. I've served on a, on a board up in Indiana where we live and everything. And my main reason for being on the board is just to uh, give back to the community. And I think I'm capable of doing that. And you've got a nice, really nice group here. And uh, we're going to have a tough time following the other crowd and everything that was in before us, Beverly and, uh, and everybody. But we'll do the best we can. And unless you've got any questions, if there's any more, my, uh, my main motto is just to use common sense and and uh, do the work that the people want us to do. You're actually the boss, uh, we're not, uh, we're just directors and we do the people's work in Port Charlotte Valley. So if you got any questions, why I'll take them and if not, why I'll just keep it short and sweet unless there's anything else you wanna know. Good morning, my name is Danny Kopenhauer, Unit 152, and if you see, if you've got my resume, you see that I'm kind of the guy that's known as the spam man, I started the spam book out, Elaine loves it, so don't let her shake her hand. As you, as you look down here, Bonnie and I have been married for 56 years, we've lived here for three years, we've actually owned in here for four. Uh, I have quite a resume, I left some of the stuff off, I've been very busy through the years. I was on the board and president of an HOA in Elkhart in Green Valley Estates. I was president of the union for 10 years. I ran the dye department and the prototype department for CTS in Elkhart, which is an electronics firm. Every one of you have parts from our company. We make the sensors for your cars. So when the sensor goes bad, don't come to me, it's the company. I've been retired for 15 years. I've taken extra cat classes through IU uh, on labor law and arbitration and mediation. So I and I've been involved on 15. Or, I'm sorry, Tom got me on this yesterday. 15 to five contracts with the company that I've sat down and negotiated. And to go back a little bit, I am a tool and die maker and an engineer. So I've worked on both fields. I worked on the safety committee for the company. I worked on the board to redesign our tool room, which we had at the time 120 million in it. So we, we had to go over to safety, redesigning it. So I have experience on designing. Bonnie and I have lived in 13 homes. A few of them I designed, we built a few of them. 
The home we have here was it's just three years old. I went in and redesigned what they had, so they had had to change it to what we wanted. So my experience has been on many boards. I was on the hospital board. I was on the, worked with the church board. I worked with the booster club board. President of several of them. And I think what some of them have told me this morning, I got a big mouth, so I, I get involved in stuff. And my agenda, I guess you would call it, for Port Charlotte Village, which number one, Bonnie and I love this place. This is one of the best decisions we ever made was moving here. The people here are more like family than just neighbors. So saying that, my agenda is just to follow what Tom and George started with our finances. We continue on and keep that, us out of trouble, stay out of debt, do not spend money that we do not have. So we have to stay with that. And also to go along with what Bill has started with the sewage system and the water system. A lot of us have been upset because the water's been shut off. But now that it's done, we're gonna be awful happy because they, they can shut off just a street. We're not gonna shut off the whole park. So that will help out a lot. And I think two of the things that I kind of look forward to getting involved in is two things we've had on the books for, on the agenda for almost three years now. I'm looking at Beverly. Uh, the bathroom, number one, get those to the handicapped. So our handicapped friends or relatives, as we call it, as I call you, have free use of the bathrooms. And we want to make, bring them up to date. If you looked in the pool room and looked in this kitchen, they're beautiful. So why not make the rest of it that way? Number two is this, the hall. We need to update the hall. We gotta bring it. New flooring, paint it. I think bring everything up to date. Those are the two main things I'd like to see go. We have other things that people would like, but those two I think should be done first. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. Why don't you wait until after all the candidates speak first before we ask questions for it? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Gary? How can I follow that? That's a pretty big resume. Why did I have to sit next to you? <laughs> all right, my name is Lynn Dunlong. I live in Unit 148. Um, I'm married to my husband, Stephen, and I have one daughter that resides in. Uh, LA area of California. I Most of my career was in the medical field. I was an x-ray tech for 33 years. In that time I did mobile x-ray, went to nursing homes, rehab centers, and I also worked on a mobile lithotripsy unit which crushed kidney stones. We went to different areas in North Carolina. <clears throat> and then um, after I, I kind of got burnt out as an x-ray tech, and I was doing mobile x-ray shows, always on the road, always driving. In New England, we all know that sometimes it's not the best conditions to drive in. And I had a little Ford Focus station wagon, not a four-wheel drive. So after I did that, I went to nursing school for a year. I was wanted to be LPN and work in a nursing home, but my uh, husband got in an accident and lost his left leg. So I took time out of school to help him rehabilitate and take him to appointments and uh, we're actually, we're lucky, he's lucky he's alive, I'm lucky he's alive too. So I, when I went back to nursing school, I decided that it's not what it used to be. Nursing isn't about the patient now. All you do is sit there and chart. And if you don't dot that I or cross that T, you can be sued. And I thought, at my age, do I want to really get into a profession that's that um, liable or that, that is that stressful? Because I wanted to scale down. So then when I quit nursing school, I worked for a physician and I did his nursing and, um, and gave injections and everything in his office until, until we moved here to Florida. I loved this village. I never looked at any place else other than this village because once I was here, I loved it. Been here visiting and living almost four years. Um, I was asked a little over a year ago to take up the garden club if I would restart the garden club that used to be out here. And I did with the help of many of my friends. Um, we helped her. Tanner Hall to get stone and in the front. We just wanted it to look better. And you come into the park. This is the biggest amenity in this park, is this area. We wanted to look nice when they showed people houses in the park. Um, so I was I'm part of the garden club. Um, I, coordin I coordinate the yard of the month now. 
I was asked to take that over by a friend, and I said, sure, if I was here all summer, and even though we don't do it during the summer, I wouldn't be opposed to doing it all year. Um, and I'm a member of the patrol. So um, I'm very passionate about our village, and one thing you can always expect from me is honesty and fairness. I don't always think I'm right. I like to listen to what people have to say. Um, and that's what I'll bring to the board. And if I don't get on the board, I, I can tell you that whoever out of here, out of us does, you're gonna have a good board. So, thank you. Lynn, that's a tough act to follow. I said, Lynn, what are you doing here? This is all fun. Good morning, neighbors and friends. Wow, 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 huh? What a difference 20 days make. You know, back in November and early December, I was firm about my thoughts to leave the board of directors. After three years of service, I felt my work was finished with the PCV Treasury, and it was time for me to move on. And let somebody else take over to be, as a PC resident, take over the financial responsibilities of the park and interject their positive thoughts and take the accounting system to the next level. I personally believe in change. In fact, I welcome change in my life every day and enjoy thinking outside the box to find solutions for the most difficult problems in my life. Change is good for all of us, which is why I personally thought after three years I'd let somebody else step in and move us forward. After all, all the heavy lifting had been done, the parks accounting system was now balanced, plus the annual budget process for 2021 was now complete, and the budget was structured to create a financial success for the 2021 budget, or for the 2021 board of directors. So I felt now was my perfect time to leave the board. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> After I publicly announced the decision to leave the board, it wasn't but a few weeks later I found myself thinking about the PCV residents. And you know, we all kid that this is a loving place and uh, people care about one another. And I always thought that was a cliche. And when I moved into the Mark Park, I said, okay, this is a loving place. But I found out the last three years working through some tough spots telling everybody that the park was going in the wrong direction, working with the state of Florida to get us out of a couple tight spots, that I realized that y'all had my back and I totally appreciate that. That's the reason I'm running again, is that I thought four new members on the board out of seven may be too tough for us all to swallow. Uh, I want to make sure we move forward in a positive direction and hence that's why I'm here today to help those folks out. Thank you. Hi, I'm Matt Publicover from Unit 221. Um, I'm probably one of the people that you may not know quite as much as some of the other folks up here. We've only lived in the park for two years, my wife Barbara and I. Um, we absolutely love it. Uh, I can't believe that uh, I was willing to give up New England and the beauty of the mountains and the ocean there and come down to this place that is just constantly hot and sunny and <laughs> wonderful and beautiful and never have to shovel snow again, never have to rake leaves. Absolutely love the park down here and the retired life. Uh, I want to thank um, Tom Pody for, for his decision. I think it's a great thing that he's running again because I was very concerned when there were uh, four people leaving the board uh, and it was uh, including the president and the vice president. That was a lot of uh, a lot of experience to lose all at once. Now I agree that all the four, but the six of us that are up here uh, are all good folks so whoever you elect it's, it's going to be a good board. But just to help you uh, differentiate what, what I might bring to it, um, I was uh, also involved in uh, 
in uh, budgeting, I worked on the um, Merrimack School uh, Department budget uh, as the uh, member of the budget committee for four years when it was uh, inaugurated. I was a uh, treasurer for a soccer uh, recreation group and helped uh, turn around uh, their budgets, which were in uh, complete disarray. Um, I got an English degree from Dartmouth, but I ended up doing my entire career in management and planning in retail and, uh, and wholesale for some companies that uh, any of you are from New England would certainly know. MVP Sports, Decathlon, Eastern Mountain Sports, and Yankee Candle. So it's kind of ironic how it turned out, but it turned out well. I was able to retire at 63, and, and here I am. Um, one of the things that I think I bring, you know, that I offer is the fact that uh, some people don't know me. I'm not part of any particular clique or group or crowd. Uh, I listen to everybody, um, and I'll be that way on the board. I tend to, when I was on the budget committee, one of the approaches I took is that I would go back to core principles to try to decide things. Uh, in the public schools, for example, I'd, I'd think about why we have a public school and use that to decide whether or not this item was good to cut or that item was good to, uh, to fund. Um, and the, the same would go on here in the park. Um, I believe I was helpful uh, just a few months ago when the board was trying to decide what to do about the, uh, the countertop that had been ordered for the kitchen and was no longer available. And they were looking at uh, two other countertops, one of which nobody had seen, so they weren't sure if it was going to be good, and one that they had seen and they liked, but it was more expensive. Well, we were getting down kind of to the wire and wanting to complete the kitchen. And so the board was leaning, I would say, towards the, uh, the one that they knew and it was more expensive. And just going to the uh, pre-board meeting, I kind of piped up and I said, to save the park $5,000, wouldn't it be worth <coughs> taking the time to go see this one that you're not sure of? And I believe that's the countertop that we ended up uh, installing. So we did end up saving the park $5,000. So it's just thinking about um, the core principle of trying to save the park money and still get it something that we wanted um, is an example of, of what I can bring to the board. Not that all these other people can't, it's just the way I approach things. It's the analysis that I put into my uh, decisions. Um, I've been chipping into the park however I can since I moved here. Uh, I, joined, I was part of the... Um, Recycling Committee since it was formed about a year and a half ago when Donna Fresnilla was in charge of it. Uh, once she joined the board, she uh, left the uh, recycling responsibilities to, to me. I had a few other people who were helping out at the time, but then when COVID hit, uh, most of them have uh, took a step back, and so I've been pretty much doing it on my own right now. We haven't had any trainings because this is the largest gathering I've seen since COVID uh, COVID began, um, but in terms of emptying the bags and picking things out of the dumpster, you know, that's pretty much been on me for the last year. Uh, I helped cook hot dogs at the uh, um, Memorial Day last year. I don't, you'd have seen a lot more of me this year if we'd had any events, because I was ready to, to really do a lot of different things. But, um, you know, whatever happens, whether I'm elected or not, I'm still going to contribute to the park. And uh, I just want to see it uh, continue and prosper and be a good place for all of us to live. Thank you, Matt. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jerry Guyry. Uh, my wife and I live in Unit 158, uh, right out the main drag to the middle of our wonderful park. Um, and I want to thank everybody for the opportunity to introduce myself and more importantly the opportunity to thank all of the departing as well as the current board members for having the, the fortitude um, to see us through some rougher times uh, in years past. But I don't think we could be in a better shape than we are right now with the people that have been on the board and the fact that Tom is coming back 
I think it's a major, major plus. Um, my wife and I have been residents here in the park uh, more or less since 19, or, uh, sorry, 2013. Uh, first as a renter, and then uh, as a purchaser and a shareholder now uh, in the latter part of 2017. So why did I decide to run for the board? I've been so impressed with the shape that this park is in um, and, the, and the job that the current board has done. I wanted to contribute and be a part of that positive momentum that I believe the park has going for it right now. I have no personal agenda. Um, I have no obligation to anyone. So I believe I would be able to um, exercise objectivity in any opportunity that might come before me. I don't owe anything to anyone, so that's a good thing. Um, but what qualifications I believe I bring, I have experience in uh, dispute resolution. I was a major account uh, salesperson as well as a national account coordinator in my business career. Uh, so I've been involved in many opportunities that demanded objectivity, listening, and trying to make intelligent decisions uh, without any personal agenda involved. I have a history of giving back um, that I would like to continue to give back, in this particular case, to this community. Um, I've been a long time supporter and raised uh, well over $150,000 for the Ronald McDonald House. Uh, that was a, an effort of love, if you will. Um, the Salvation Army, uh, if you haven't seen me up uh, ringing the bell at uh, either Publix or Winn-Dixie down the street, um, I had a very big bell that I bought this year because I didn't care for that little dinky thing that they gave you. So I have a real bell now, and uh, people will notice that I've been there. The veterans, homeless veterans that I worked with up in Michigan uh, with an operation called Stand Down was a multi-day event to help homeless vets uh, get somewhat more mainstream uh, and make sure they have access to, to proper health care, to housing opportunities, to work opportunities, etc. So that's something I did for a number of years as well. If you decide to honor me with your vote, I promise I will work tirelessly to repay that trust. Um, and again, I want to I want to thank you for the opportunity to meet with you and speak with you today. And now, if, if any of you have any questions, um, we're more than happy to answer whatever we can. Strive to protect and increase PCB homeowner value established by our current board. Can you give me an example of how you would do that? Well, I think over the last two or three years, um, based on the work that the board has done, I think we are a more attractive park for new residents today than we were several years ago. Yeah. And again, thank you to the current board and the executive members especially, um, I think that I would like to contribute in any way I can to continue that momentum in making our park as attractive as we can make it, to bring in new um, residents at every opportunity. And again, anything I can do that, to help maintain that momentum, I think pays dividends uh, to all of us as homeowners. And ultimately, I think we have enjoyed and will continue to see increasing values in our in our investments. Um, but I think the biggest investment we have is is the opportunity to give back to the community, participate in the park. There are so many different opportunities to to help in some way in helping out your neighbor, in helping out on a committee, in just being good neighbors. And, and that's what we all are. We are neighbors. And 
and uh, we need to treat each other as such and honor the, the integrity that we hope everyone wants to share. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you.
And I just was wondering how you would support the Rules and Regulations Committee and follow through. Um, we haven't at this, for the last many years, uh, instituted a finding committee. Uh, we did have some members that um, agreed to volunteer for that committee, but we hadn't implemented any. And uh, there's some areas that I feel as though we need to um, start finding people. How would you support us? And would you agree with the fact that if they don't follow the rules and regulations that you would be um, okay with starting to find people in the, in the community? Well, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, I, uh, I would support the Rules and Regulations Committee. In fact, I was the one that brought the committee to, uh, to existence. And uh, we had the first uh, fine and action against a, uh, a member. And uh, we had three park residents uh, set in judgment in that meeting and everything and came to an equitable decision for everybody. And I would still do that. Uh, rules are very important, and I think they have to be followed. And uh, if, we, if we don't follow them, we're gonna have to find some, the board is gonna have to find some kind of way of making sure that they are followed. And whether that be a fine or whatever it would be. We've had different situations in the park that we've had to address and we address them as a board. Uh, you're just one member out of six. However, uh, my opinion on the rules and regulations is pretty strong, I think. Uh, they're necessary. Unfortunately, they're necessary in most cases, okay? And I would just like to say a thing on the finances, if I could. Uh, I agree with Tom. I think Tom and George Kelly did a wonderful job of getting this park out of debt, okay? And uh, I think we should continue in that line. We've got a, as far as uh, community values, uh, what makes your value go up on your property, a couple of the things is the uh, no debt, which we don't have now. And number two, the uh, healthiness of your reserve system to address any issues you might have in emergency situations or just normal planning, i.e. the bathrooms, which I think should come next. So I think everybody working together and my main input, I like to get as much input as I can from the people who live here. That's the real boss, not the board. And if the people that live here disagree with the board, I think the board should go in the direction of the people that live here, unless it's a safety issue or something like that, okay? That's one of the reasons why we need people to show up at our board meetings, to get input from them. Um, and that hasn't been happening lately, I know because of COVID, but if you can, um, you know, give us input. We need it. <laughs> you know, we, we can't make decisions on our own. We want to follow what, what the group wants. So I know. Please, please uh, attend meetings. All we can do is, as a board, is network, bring our networking to the table, and discuss it among the board members. It's a really tough question to get people to come to the board meeting. Uh, I wish this hall would be packed every time we had a board meeting. And any big decision we have to make, whether it's financial or whatever it is, has to be addressed to the people first. Uh, we can make the little decisions money-wise, but any big decisions have to be addressed to the people first. And then we go from there, but that's the starting point, the foundation point. Okay? Thanks for your question, Tom. Patricia Dunkley, 349. Uh, this question is for Ron Wheeler. Well, I'm sure you were president and vice president at one time, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and under your uh, leadership, <clears throat> the, the finances were in ruins, I believe. And I'd like you to explain how that happened and if you did anything to correct it. Thanks for your question, and uh, you're right. They were attached, and uh, we, uh, no, no, not because of me. I'm a director. I was a director on the board. There are six members on the board. They all voted for anything that happened, and anything that did happen was by approval of the board and the people of the park. Okay, uh, we had a. 
I do not want to get into names, but we had a, a, a treasurer that really wasn't competent enough. He did his best, but it, uh, it didn't come out good, and it looked good on paper, and the board all voted for it, but it could have been done better, and thanks to Tom and George, it was done better, and I appreciate that very much. You know, Ron, I was willing to let sleeping dogs lie and just move on with my life, which I thought you were going to do as well. But when you were president and vice president, I've read emails that you knew about the alley, but didn't tell the general public. I've read, I've read emails that... What did I know about? About the alleys in the books, but didn't tell anybody for three years. Not true. Okay. The other thing is, we have a statute called 719, and you put $400,000 of this park's money into a speculative account against our CPA firm's advice. You did not make sure that the negative accounts were funded before you did that. You did not get legal advice. And, you, and we could have been fined from the state of Florida because of those actions. Not once, but twice you took funds out of restricted reserves to fund that account. How do you explain that? We, we live by yeah. 719, and as a advisor, for that. and excuse me, I think as president, vice president, treasurer, you have an obligation to know what's going on. Not knowing what's going on isn't an excuse. You are entitled, and I told everybody when I sat down at the table three years ago, I will never give you a budget that you will say, I don't understand this. Because I will sit with you and explain every part of this until you understand it. I think you sold the part short during your term because of that. You stood up here, and I remember my first year in the park telling everybody, we got to, you know, we got to put more money in reserves. We need a million dollars. We just had a restricted reserve company come through here and tell us that. We're going to put it in Vanguard. It's a safe account. Well, guess what? It's not a safe account uh, according to 719. It's a speculative account. So, you know, you can't have it both ways. And I hope you have changed and I hope you can bring positive things to the board if you're elected. But that's what happened. And I got documentation, emails to prove it. Thank well, uh, what you said, Tom, is not true. There's some basis of truth in what you say, but the overall statement is not true. I was a member of the board as vice president and president. I was not the treasurer, and the board approved everything that we did and in fact, as far as the investments go, we had people on the board. Priscilla was one of them I can think of that said we should put it in a different kind of investment, CDs or something like that. And I said, yeah, that's very safe, but you can make more money probably investing in a low risk investment account. It has to be extremely low risk. And we came to the people sitting right here in this hall and we asked the people, which one do you want to do? Do you want to put it in CDs? Or do you want to put this money in a low risk investment account? The vote was over 90%. I listened to the people is who I listened to, okay? And I tried to convince the board of that. And the board voted in favor of that. There was members on the board that voted against it, but there was members by the majority that voted for it. And I did go to an attorney. I went to two financial institutions. One of them is my own and talked to my own financial guy. And he said, if you do something like that, do it at a very low risk capability. And we did just that. It was a 2080 fund. And when we went back to the people and said, would you like to, we're making very good money on this fund, which we were. When we took over, we had less than $300,000 in the reserve account. When we left, we had $425,000 in the, in the reserve account. This is what brings your property values up, along with the no debt, which you and George accomplished, 
And I appreciate that very much. I think you did a fantastic job. And I've told you that several times. However, to blame one individual to try to do that is really below you to do that. Because this is a board decision, it's a people decision, and that's the way it was voted on, and that's the way it was implemented. And I had nothing personally to do with it except I was in favor of it. And we did that after talking to many financial people and an attorney. Right, I'm not gonna sit up here and debate, but you know some of the emails that I have, we've talked about them. And um, you did not put $400,000, you did not vote on 400,000, or did not vote from 300 to 400,000. You took $100,000 out of our budget to make it 400,000. It did not have that type of burden. The second thing is, do you think it's a safe account if we're losing $35,000 a month because the way the market was going up $1,000, or a thousand points and down a thousand points, that's speculative. And if you look at 719, it says to invest in financial accounts, not stock market accounts. Okay? And you need to be safe with these funds because you know as well as I do, when we lose $35,000 at the end of the year, that has to be replaced out of our budget before we can go forward. So let's quit this shit and just move forward. Uh, absolutely, I agree. Bring the emails, bring the emails, we'll read them. And I'm not the one that was brought to the state because they did not go to the people on spending $250,000. Yeah, right, but you know what? You should have been. You should have been twice. Because that's 719. Okay, let's, let's, just, let's get back to the candidates. We don't need to this argument back and forth. I'd like to okay. get back to the candidates, if okay. I could. I'd like to ask a question. Um, for our candidates, what might you, uh, some of you have already said it, but what might you hope to bring or accomplish in your first year in the board? Um, Jerry? Maybe I could ask Jerry? I would like to see the continuation of some of the projects that have been started, not yet completed. I believe we should have handicap accessibility in the restroom, both men and ladies. Uh, so that's something I would like to see be accomplished. Um, I'm also in favor of upgrading the hall the best we can. Short of knocking down walls and expanding, which maybe in the long run might be something that we might want to look at. Um, we need additional capacity in here. So between the, the restrooms and the hall, I think those are two things that um, I, I would like to, to be a part of. Thank you. Matt, how about you? Okay, well, those are all things that, uh, you know, that are already sort of like talked about and underway. So just to come up with something that is a concern of mine that uh, hasn't been addressed is um, the ability of the board to communicate with everybody in the park on an efficient basis. We have a lot of different communication methods here. We have the text messaging, we have the, uh, the TV channel, we've got the newsletter, we've got the, uh, the Facebook um, group, uh, but not everybody is uh, available to take part in some of these things. Not everybody's on Facebook. Not everybody has an email. The text messages cost money every time we send one out. The, the post office is one of the most efficient ways to get something out to every single member, but that costs a lot of money. And the TV channel is antiquated. It's like you know, working with green screen. So over the next year or so, uh, the park's gonna have to renegotiate the cable contract. One of the things I would really like to see is an upgrade to the, uh, to the community TV channel such that we can have not only longer messages, but even videos and perhaps live feeds. Uh, because pretty much, at least at this point, everybody gets the TV channel. And that would be one way that the board could get the messages out uh, on, a, on a timely basis. Uh, and it's, it should be... Uh, it should be a no-brainer uh, to get that as part of our next contract. So that's one of the things I'd like to work on. Thank you, Matt. Question, Matt? <coughs> yes. Matt, question. 
I just want to say that is underway right now. Bob has been working on that with a couple of different places, and uh, we hope to see a lot of improvement in the channel. Bob, great minds think alike. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing personal, guy. I'm going to ask just Lynn, uh, just because we don't have much from you, Lynn. Could you answer on that one? Well, I think the main thing I would work on is keeping our, uh, our budget in budget. I, I think just because we have money, we don't need to go spend it. I, I don't think anybody in this park wants our HOAs to go up. So my main objective is to keep our HOAs where they're at for as long as we can. Thank you. Any other board members want to jump in? I didn't want to necessarily take up everything, but. You asked what our yep. agenda, what we're looking at. One thing that I think I bring to the board is leadership quality. I've been in a leadership role in many of my organizations I've been in. In my job, like I said, I ran the, the part of the tour role, which was a large one. And I, I go along with what, with what I said earlier, we have to watch our money. It's like we've been told from little up, if you don't have that penny, you don't spend it. So if anything we want, we better have the money up front. No more going in debt. We don't need that. And with the value of the homes, right along with, that goes right along with it. I've been in enough homes. We've been in two different facilities down here or subdivisions here. The big thing is to bring your value up, keep the value of your park in line. When you go out looking for things, first thing people ask you, what kind of debt does your subdivision have? We can probably say none. So I think my big thing is to keep that at zero and bring my leadership ability in line. Thank you. And Danny, I think you just continue to run the uh, spam project. You know, another revenue generator. And we are going to have a spam fry, so stick with me. Some of my ideas moving forward is one, I'd like to take a strong look at what it takes for approval by the board to get a project moving forward. Right now we have seven members on the board and it only takes four people to make a decision for the whole park. I'd like to see that move to five people so there's a strong majority back in the projects we get into. The second thing I'd like to do is look at the accounting system um, and get that online. We should be able to balance our books on a monthly basis without going to our CPA firm. Currently, we take the check register down to D's and D's and pay them $300 a month just to tell us that we're in balance or all the checks are there at the bank. And that's something we should be able to do and handle. So we just have to pay them for an annual audit, maybe, or maybe a six month review. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think I would like to go along with the uh, financial stability part, and I don't see any reason why we can't keep the uh, HOA fees right where they're at. Plus, the uh, I think the first uh, thing on the agenda for the board to address one way or the other, and I would like to get the people in on that, is the uh, bathrooms. Uh, that's our next step in the upgrades, and uh, the bathrooms need to be followed by the uh, social amenities, i.e. the stage. And we've got plans, tentative plans, for both of these, so they just need to be fine-tuned, and we need to get three bids out on the project and decide which project needs to go first. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, I'm just curious what okay. they had in mind for their first year. Yeah, that, that's the first thing I would do as far as projects go. I would try to work on the bathrooms, I think, okay? Can I say something? This is not related to anything about the board. Um, I just got a text from someone in the park and their mother passed away. And I don't know if you know Mary Ann Duffy. She passed away this morning. I just got a text from her. So let's keep her, let's keep her in our prayers because she was a, uh, Debbie and I took care of her for a while. She was a wonderful woman. And uh, let's just... She's Bill Johnson's sister as well. Yeah, oh, okay. Here. Okay, I did not know that. Thank you, Lynn.
we had this uh, forum today because I did change my mind on one person. I haven't made out my ballot yet. Uh, on our survey, there was a question about cheating us. How did each one of you feel about that? No. Well, tiki well personally, I can tell you I think that we need other things before a tiki hut. And that's just my opinion, but I would take it out to the people because we work for you. So, but that's my personal opinion. I, I agree with Linda. One thing that we need to do when we can all get back together is have another town board meeting. Then people can sit down and talk about stuff that you want in the future. We've already got two red big projects in, in line. That's going to take probably another two years to do. And to be all honest about it. Beyond that, we have a town board meeting. Bring up new things that you want. Put a list together what's the high priority and go down. So at the Tiki Hut, there may be something that's put on the, on the agenda in the future. To say it's going to be something that we're going to look at in the next year or two? Probably not. I don't think the board will have the money to do it. So, you know, try to be honest about everything. But the people, like, has been said up here, it's up to you what you want. Where the money is spent, it's not really up to us. We're, we're under your thumb, in a sense, barely to tell you that. So, we work together. Don't. Don't be afraid to talk to a board member. I know I'm not. And if I have to get on the board, I walk every morning up and down these streets. And if you want to tell me something out there, you want to chew my hair in now, I walk the streets. Don't be afraid to stop and let me know. So I'm a street walker. So that being said, you know, if, if I have the honor to be on this board, don't be afraid to say something to me. And we, I hope we can have a town board meeting and get more ideas from everybody. So, thank you. And I'm on the other side of the fence with the Tiki Hut. I don't think we need a Tiki Hut per se, but a pavilion over in the Pines would be a great place for social activities, for the uh, party that takes place there every Monday, or other people just to go socialize, play cards, or whatever. And uh, you can put up a very simple Pavilion there for less than twenty thousand, and I'm sure we can find that in our budget to make it happen. It just again, you know, um, how many projects do we want to put on our plate, and how many can we manage? The one thing about Tanner Hall is we need to make sure we don't cross that threshold of one hundred forty thousand dollars spent in upgrades in any twelve month period. So we just spent ninety thousand. We have to wash that out in the next six or eight months before we can spend another 90000 on this place here. So that may take us into the following year already. In the meantime, we could have put up a pavilion in the, the pines and helped us with our, our picnic in March or other activities. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your question, Bill. Uh, I think the Tiki Hut is a good idea, but it's way down the list. Uh, we have to get these other things done first. The bathroom, the social amenities on the inside of the uh, Tanner Hall, and anything else that has to be done to Tanner Hall before we move outside and, and do that stuff, I think. Okay? Thank you. Well, I, I pretty much agree with uh, what's been said. Uh, the, uh, it's a good idea, but um, I think we need to sequence things out. I mean, on the boards that I've been on before, when there were capital improvements uh, that were uh, planned, they would sequence them out over the course of the year so they would know, looking forward, um, you know, what was planned for this year, what was planned for next year, so that it didn't have too much of an impact at the time on taxes, but in this case, you know, potentially on an HOA fee. Uh, and so if, if we have a, a good list of, um, projects that the, the people want, which they specify at a town hall sort of forum, then we can sequence them out. And it doesn't mean it's cast in stone, but uh, you know you can always go back and revisit it. But that way people would already know, okay, this is planned for a couple of years from now. This is planned for this year. And uh, you know, as, as Tom said, we have to be careful of Tanner Hall, but uh, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean we have to go and spend money that, um, wouldn't be a priority 
we can save it for Tanner Hall maybe at the end of the year or something like that. I'm Barbara Simpson with 388, and uh, my question relates to communication that's been mentioned several times by people here. No, by people here. My question's about communication, and that's been mentioned several times by people in the audience here about communication with the board and how to enhance that. A couple of suggestions have been mentioned, cable TV enhancements and maybe town hall meeting, uh, but I think it's really so important that the people in the community are aware and know how they can have input into what the board's decisions that are coming forward or what they're thinking about. And I'd like to know from each of you what other suggestions you might have to communicate with the residents of the park. With so many new people in the COVID, that's so important. Thank you. I think there um, is an opportunity there for whoever the board members end up being. Uh, to create a, a group email address so anybody in the park that other than walking up to someone or phoning them uh, could send out an email to a group mailbox which would be consistent with uh, whoever the board members are and that would be one way to communicate your thoughts your ideas your complaints uh, to the entire board at the same time and I, I don't think that would be a major project to implement Jerry, I believe we already have that. We have a website called PC Village that all the directors are on there. And all you have to do is send an email to one or all of our addresses there and we receive your comments. So that's already in place. I'd like to uh, see us do something more with the text. It's really not that expensive, folks, for the mileage we get out of it and the people we contact directly. Um, today's a day and age. Just about everybody carries a cell phone that receives text messages. <laughs> that was well played. And like they say in church, please turn your cell phones off or be embarrassed later on. You know, we're no different here than DC. But so I really think we have to go electronic route. Uh, the TV screen, I think, has kind of gone by the wayside. Um, maybe we don't update that enough. Maybe it's too hard to update. But I don't think a lot of us sit at our TV screen watching that change on a daily basis. Uh, the post office is expensive. I mean, stamps are going to go up to 50, 60 cents a, a mailing. So multiply that times 435 every time we mail something out, and you're probably around, uh, you know, $500 or so. So. Anyways, I think electronically, anything we can do via email that's free or texting uh, that's really cheap, uh, we should do that. My thoughts. One thing I have on that too is I've noticed in the last year or so, if you have a complaint, don't be afraid to talk to the people. And if you send a letter, and I know Beverly has mentioned this several times, sign it. Don't be afraid to sign it. We don't, we aren't going to hold anything against you. Like I said earlier, we consider ourselves family. And families argue. Families fight among themselves, but don't you come in and fight us that you're going to face all of us. But we can argue among ourselves. We can get jobs done. Don't be afraid to approach anybody on your board. Because that's what they're out here for, is to help you. They're just representing you. We, we think at times they're representing themselves, but no. Their job is to represent you. We have some fine ideas about getting communication back and forth. But I think the number one communication is face to face. Come up and say something. Thank you. Well, I agree with um, I agree with Tom and Danny, and I well, I think most people out here see me riding around all the time. So I'm not even on the board. I've had people approach me with things that they don't they like or are happy about, and I try to get them in, you know, in contact with someone who can help them if I can. So I think word of mouth. Um, I have a friend of mine who's not on the text system, so every time I get a text from Bob, I call her and say water's going to be turned off from 10:30 to. So it, it's you know we got to communicate money amongst each other. I mean, and I also think that at the at the post office, those bulletin boards. Things are advertised there. Most people go get their mail, so continue to do that. So 
So that's that's what I think. Could we hear from the others who have had a chance to speak? I like Tom's idea of the text and everything. That's a good way of communication. Uh, I know I get a lot of text and uh, I, I get a lot of information that way. But there's several ways to do it. The text, email, call. Our phone numbers is on, are on there, like they said. And uh, once this COVID thing is over, stop by and see me. You know, that's what I uh, I like to do is talk to the people. Okay. Well, I've already mentioned uh, you know, the upgrade to the TV as a way to get more live presentations, but that's only one way. So uh, you know, communication is a two-way street. You know, the people to communicate to the board, the board to communicate to the people. Uh, I think you know, using a, a, uh, an email system, uh, most people have emails, but a lot of people don't look at them very often, to be totally honest. Um, Another thing I would suggest, not as a you know something that the board has to implement, but just something for everybody's benefit, I would highly recommend if you're not a member of the uh, Port Charlotte Village Facebook page, that you should join because there is so much information that we find out about what's going on, uh, people who have passed away, people who are uh, selling sticky buns, you know who knows what everything that comes on, where the alligator is today. It's a great communication, and I know some people who hate Facebook. They never wanted to be on Facebook, uh, but a couple of them we were able to convince to join Facebook only to be on that page. And if that's the only place you go, you're not going to see all the other nonsense that's on Facebook. But just for the, face, um, the, the Port Charlotte Village page, it's a marvelous uh, communication tool. And it is, it is administered by Paul Norton, so he controls who is on it and it doesn't it doesn't get nasty or he boots it out of there. So uh, that, I, would, I would just highly recommend that. Any other questions? Dominic has a question. Okay. Happy birthday, Dominic. <laughs> Thank you. You're the one. I'm voting for you. You're the only, only one up there that wish me a happy birthday. Uh, it's, it's a comment for all you prospective people that are running. We have a lot of talent in this park. I didn't realize until uh, this, the last meeting we had here yesterday um, that the bocce ball courts were built by us originally. We can do some of these smaller projects and we don't have to hire out. So I want my comment is in any of these small projects, look within the park that we can get done other than waiting, putting it off because we don't have money. Uh, the bridges, I remember when Jerry Howitt had a crew, we built these bridges ourselves. But, and one of the major costs to a project is labor. So this is something that I think should be looked at more in the future. Some of these pro small projects, instead of hiring out and getting and spending the money, we can do it within because we have a lot of good talent within our park. Point, Tom, uh, I agree with you. Uh, we had somebody mention to me uh, pickleball courts too, and I, you know, we need to do a survey on something like that. That's something we could do, but we first got to get these bathrooms done and the inside updated, and then we can look at some of these other projects. But Dom, I think you asked us all to answer this, um, if I'm not mistaken. So, but. Um, I agree. We have talent right here in our park. And I, along with many, many other people who volunteers, laid down a lot of rock right out here, out those doors and up front. And we didn't charge a park a dime. Right. If we had, if we had people come in and do it for us, it was going to cost a lot of money. So I agree. I think if you get someone to do something for as a volunteer, I'm all for that. I want to add one more comment about the, that topic. Um, we certainly do have the talent base within this park to accomplish much more than we may think we have. But what it takes is 
a willingness to get involved, a willingness to help, and a willingness to volunteer to participate in some of these projects. If you think you have any particular skill set that might be amenable to any of these smaller projects that we're talking about, I don't think we want to take on uh, revamping the restrooms for uh, you know for that issue. But the smaller projects, get involved, volunteer, make use of your talents, and, and share it within your community. Another thing along that line, if you ask people, if you share anything, I got spam. All I have to do is go out and ask some people, will you do this for me? They show up. They're all willing to help. It isn't like you're on your own. Ask the question. We got very good people here. They will help. So if you see something you think we can do, like Dominic said, is there something we can do? Be willing to share that little, that project. Ask your neighbors, ask your friends. Just let them know you need help and you'd be surprised how many people show up. We had the luminaries that I kind of, Gary forced me to do. I'm going to pick on you, Gary. But, I'm arms yeah. <laughs> but I put the word out I needed help. Fill the sandbags. We had more people than we could have shovels. So that's the kind of people that are in here. They will help at anything. So it's just a matter of asking and you will get it. So thank you. One small part uh, project that we could probably do, real simple, to kick this whole thing off would be the uh, horseshoe pits over in the pines. Uh, I think that there's more than a handful of people that like to throw shoes here. And if we just upgraded those pits, um, we could have a lot of fun with them. So that's my idea. wonderful talented people in this park because I'm always looking for people for helping hands. The last two projects I needed I had to go outside the park to find someone that was willing to help. Now if you've got a few skills I'm not asking you to rebuild a house or or do major plumbing but minor things would be very helpful to know that you are able to, to do that for someone in our park who is not able to do that. Sometimes all it takes is crawling up on a ladder and changing a light bulb for someone that cannot any longer stand on a ladder. But I need people that will be able and willing to help do that. So I'm certainly glad to hear that so many people are so talented and so willing to help us. We also always accept wonderful donations in case I do have to pay someone to do something, and I am very appreciative of that. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for giving us the opportunity to be up here um, and present ourselves to you. And um, going forward, um, no matter what happens, I think this is a great place to live. And I'd, I'd like to see more people at the board meetings. That's one way to know what's going on and get your input out there. Thank you very much. Just want to make a public announcement here that I did yesterday at uh, Donuts and Coffee. If there's any question about how to respond to the less than totally fun question on our proxy this year, the answer that we'd like to see would be yes. And that would just duplicate what we did last year. If you answer no, it means that we put an extra fifty thousand dollars into the restricted reserve. It's really an overpayment. It's like making an extra payment or two um, on your house after you paid for your house, because everything that we have in the park today is totally funded with their reserve funds. So the answer is yes. Thank hey, Tom. Also, make sure everybody fills out their proxy. Yes, and turn them in. Get them in, so we know if we got quorum way ahead of the meeting. Right. All right, everybody, fill out your proxies and get Even them. Even if in. you're coming to the meeting, turn your proxies in.
Thank you. Brenda? I wonder if we could just end this today with all of us saying a uh, silent prayer for our country. Thank you. All right, for about 15 seconds, I'm going to run in silence. Thank you, everybody. Have a blessed day.